Hey friends, my name is Steve Guttenberg. This is my friend Jeff. And Jeff has been, uh, you know, as I've been describing it, on the, uh, the journey. It's been a journey for you, Jeff. And uh, we were talking just before we started about how many speakers you've owned before you had these zoos. And we're going to get to the zoos, but in, in more or less in chronological order, like how many speakers have you owned? Maybe like <clears throat> five or six pairs uh -huh. going back to when I uh, first started out. Uh, having my own stereo. And when was that? Oh, in the uh, early 80s. Okay. I had, I had the, you know, obligatory server in Vegas. Of course. Um, you know, the rockin', sockin' speakers. They were then, probably fun. They were. I remember having an old pair called Cannons, if my brain Cannons. remembers. I don't remember Way those. back. Okay. Then I uh, went on to Van de Steens, which I seemed to uh, oh, oh. enjoy. Uh -huh. and I had them for a while. Which ones? Two's? I had the two One? C's. Two E's, C's? The two okay. C's. And then I, I, then I went through a few speakers in rapid succession. I remember having Morton Shorts, Totems, uh -huh. um, Equations. Equation. Equations? Yeah. Okay, I don't know that one. Yeah, that was like Canadian, I think. Okay. And, um, you know, I, I, I wasn't really satisfied at that point. Uh -huh. I, and nothing really, you know, sung to me uh -huh. the way I wanted to hear it until uh, I tried Zoos and I was very... Very happy. I mean, it, it. I listened to a lot of, you know, indie rock, post punk, dub, reggae, and I like to have some dynamics in the music. And mm -hmm. I think that these capture, you know, capture it as best as I've heard it on a system that mm -hmm. I've had. I, I don't. I think I've had them like three or four years, but I've haven't had to think about speakers in a while. And Is that the longest you've had a speaker? In a I think I had the Vandersteens a long time. They were they were very good speakers. Uh -huh. I, oh yeah, definitely. Um, but you know. You change, right? Things sure. things change in life. Right. I think recently I I just been very comfortable now, and I I also added a subwoofer, right? Uh, which I think also the zoo sub, which the is zoo sub subwoofer, submission. the undertone, oh undertone, okay. undertone two, uh -huh. and I think that really kind of tied everything together for okay. me in this room. Yeah. So I just feel the sense, I feel the palpability of the music now uh -huh. and uh, the dynamics and. Very satisfying. So you're not thinking about any other speakers, at least. No, you know, you being. see things in the magazines on yeah. <laughs> some things you write about. You you flirt with it with your mind, but you say, what are you talking about? You're happy. Yeah. This, uh, you know, it's a disease, right? But I'm, 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 I'm working on it. I keep it. So uh, working back from the zoos. Wait, I'm going to walk over and not trip too much. Sure. So working back from the zoo. So they're the Soul Supreme. They're right. six, 16 ohm speakers. Yes. Which is unusual. And you, the, you're using those with this uh, first watt, it's a J2, right? That's correct. And the J2 likes high impedance speakers. Yes. So you got the, you got the right amp there. Well, yeah, Zoo, Zoo recommended that. You, uh -huh. know, you always want to make sure that it's the marriage of the, of the, right. Of the two. Right? right, right. And then you just recently got this Pre Maluma uh, preamp, right? Correct. And it's, you were saying it has got new old stock tubes and uh, right. it, the phono preamp is in it? Or? No, no, I, have a, I use a Tom Evans. Okay. Which okay. I've had forever. Alright. So you just got that recently? That's yeah, and that, that made a drastic difference. I first did it with the stock tubes, just uh -huh. to get comfortable with the sound, and then then I used the new old stock and it just took it to another level. I think this is tremendous. I think this and, and the speakers have really changed my whole system and I've just wow. been very, probably the most satisfied I've been with in my life with my system. And then you have not one, but two turntables. Yeah. A Xerxes? It's a, uh, the 20 Roxanne plus, Texas, right? 20, 20 plus. plus, and a Riga 3, yep, the RP3, plane of 3, plane of 3, okay. But you just you were telling me that the cartridge on the, on the Roxanne is new. Yeah, the Dyna Vector went up to the 20, and um, I replaced the old Denon that was on there, and that, that was a tremendous uh, improvement. But the reason you have two turntables is this one is you play the, the crappy records on the Riga. Yeah, you know, the Riga really uh, is forgiving uh -huh. and it just bounces everything along and, uh -huh. you, you know, you don't, it skips over the warts and everything and mm -hmm. uh, you have some scratchy old singles or some LPs and, uh, or poorly produced LPs and it just kind of, you know, makes lemonade out of lemons. And what's the cartridge? It's um, Hannah. Oh, wow. Yeah. The uh, S, SL, I think. Uh -huh. And then you do play digital stuff, right? Yeah, I don't have anything. I don't have my CD player hooked up right okay. now, but uh, I do. I do uh, have it. I, I use um, the Blink, which is an okay. Adcom thing. Okay. And I'm just worried about this, about this cable here. So uh, you have. Uh, we're going to get to your closet, and hopefully, I'm not yeah. going to trip on the way there. <laughs> um, 
But you have a lot of, you're not anti-digital. No. Despite the vinyl emphasis in your system, uh, you got, I'm going to walk into this closet, yeah. you have, I don't know, 4,000 CDs? I don't know, it's a lot. I've, a I've lot. I've been trying to prune them down a little bit as I've been replacing them with uh, some yeah. vinyl because in the 90s, it was rare to have a vinyl issue of, uh, right. where it was uh, hard to find. Uh -huh. And now they're starting to reissue. It's mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. going in reverse of what right. happened in the right. 80s, right? Right, right, right. I just want to not sure. step, on, don't step on the cable. So anyway, so this is just a small sampling of your uh, of your vinyl, but I'm going to go in the closet once mm -hmm. the table there, and uh, this is an adjoining room, and uh, there's a lot of CDs here, and more vinyl, <laughs> and more vinyl. I'm getting nervous. <laughs> lots of vinyl, and lots more CDs. And this, there's probably more, right? Somewhere else? Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I, have, I, have, I have a basement. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you live in Brooklyn, not that, that, that far from me. Right. So let's get out again and watch the cable. So, uh, you know, one of the things that I, I've loved when I've, I, uh, I've come by, you've always turned me on to great reggae. I mean, you're in deep and yeah. I'm in superficially more or less. And, and that's like one of your real big passions yeah. is reggae? Yes, I grew up in the North Bronx uh -huh. and um, I was really into a lot of the uh, music that was coming out in the late 70s, you know, uh -huh. the punk and the post-punk and the artsy stuff. And, uh, but then around November, everything would quiet down with releases. Uh -huh. And I lived just a few subway stops away from a big Jamaican community that uh -huh. had um, record stores like Bread's and Ted's and Wacky's, which is uh -huh. now pretty famous. And I would go in and I would spend like three or four hours in there and I would catch up in everything maybe from the last three or four months uh -huh. and they would just, I remember them having some pole with a suction cup, pulling them off the wall, uh -huh. dropping them down, putting them on their turntable and spinning it for me and I was uh -huh. either yay and nay uh -huh. and they kind of understood what I liked uh -huh. and I went with a friend, it was the two of us and we were, and it was just tremendous education from really knowledgeable yeah, record yeah, store yeah. owners and just listening to such a variety of music. And you started to get into the nuances, you know, went way past the Bob Marley. I mean, you wouldn't, yeah. Oh, yeah. You, wouldn't you wouldn't go there for that. You would right. go into the stuff that you wouldn't see anywhere else. And right. I was blessed just to be fortunate to live near there. And, yeah. and then so many of the punk bands, you know, like The Clash, and, and had such a reggae vibe to them. And mm. um, so it was just a great coupling and it kind of was a compliment to each other. And now as time has gone on, I'm starting to fill in all the other things mm. that might have been in those stores that I, <laughs> uh -huh. I didn't listen to or, or my right. ear wasn't trained. But yet. now you're buying a lot of, you're still buying a lot of physical yes. stuff, right? And you're buying it mostly on the internet now? Uh, I, well, Discogs is a great yeah, reservoir sure. for all this stuff. And then, you know, I go into every record store from near, you know, a good used store. It's nothing mm -hmm. like the feeling of Coming and then record fairs and sure. you know we live in New York so there's yeah. a lot of, a lot of alternatives. Stuff, right? yeah. But you also stream. I stream, yeah. I you know let's face it, um, it's hard to it was hard for me to kind of make the break to streaming, but right. it makes playlists easy. You don't have to burn. Remember right. burning tapes and right. then mix tapes and then mix CDs, which even some some respects harder. Mm -hmm. um, was, and you discover music. I mean, it's just. The possibilities. You hear about something and you listen to one artist and then you, oh, wait, he did play it on this other record. Those algorithms is... are tough, man. They, 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 they learn you pretty quickly. And, uh, and sometimes, you know, you know the stuff and they lead you to something and go, come on, that's not where I'm going. But a lot of times they connect and it's yeah, it's scary, right? Yeah. Or <laughs> there's, I'm sure there's stuff that you find on there that you've been searching for forever as a CD sure. or an LP. And there it is. There it it's is. Amazing. It's amazing what's on the internet right yeah. now. So for me, actually, I, I got to say, I still, I use Tidal and Kobaz mostly for discovery. And when I like it, I buy it. Same here. You know? And if I can't buy it, well, then I'll, I'll, I'll continue to listen. But for me, I don't really sit and listen to them. I, I use them for discovery. That's, that's true. Basic, I, that's my strategy. It's working so far. <laughs> that's great. So uh, anyway, I just, I... I think you've had great taste in music and certainly great taste in audio. Oh, and the other thing we're talking about is that how how you got to this point, right? You were telling me that the zoos was sort of like getting the zoo speakers was a yeah. turning point for you. I listened to, as we said, a lot of reggae, a lot of 60s stuff that, mm -hmm. you know, was used a bit mm -hmm. and uh, 60s garage rock, which I love. And those 45s were sort of loved to death or right. neglected, right? And you would play it and... 
you know, sometimes the speakers were just not be in sync, you know, right. it'd be too revealing or it would be, I don't know, it didn't, it didn't work. It was not communicating. I yeah. think that's what's happening. What's Either the music is clicking with the speaker or it's not. I mean, there was a thing that nobody talks about. Anymore. There used to be this thing they called rock speakers and classical speakers. Right. And then it, it, it became like not cool to say that. Like, oh, no, if it's a good speaker, it plays everything. Exactly. I don't believe Once that. I That's not so true. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> not true. <laughs> Definitely not true. There are some speakers that play rock way better and some speakers that play classical or opera better. So to deny that there are speakers that sort of work well with certain genres is just stupid. In my That's opinion. absolutely true. And, you know, I, I, I had read about the zoos before I bought them and... Uh, they seem, you know, uh, the owner there seems to have a lot of the same musical taste that I do. I mean, right, right, Not right. exactly, of Sean course. Casey but we're yeah, about, sure. Yeah. And uh, so I was just intrigued with that. I know he would come to record, rec, uh, not uh, music uh, hi-fi shows right. with like a DJ turntable right. set up or something. Few, so he was speaking my language, but right. it doesn't mean I was going to like the speaker. But, you know, the audition allowed me to, to listen to them. And, and, you know, it's just made everything else fall into place. Right. Everything else I've kind of built around that, except for the turntables, which I've had. A, right. But you said that the, the Dynavector is a recent addition, and you feel like that's also a really yeah. key part of the... I, I never... Sound. I heard of them, uh, in, you know, before, but I never owned one. And mm. uh, one of our uh, uh, friends, or common friends, recommended, knowing my taste, that it's a mm. very dynamic cartridge. Mm -hmm. And he thought that might, might float my boat, and he was dead on. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm, I'm really impressed with it. It's, I think it's a bargain. Uh -huh. And what, what model is it? The, it's the, the 20... The uh, Dyn twenty X like or 20, something, yeah. Twenty X, yeah. Yeah, and I, and it, it's really uh, like it's changed everything. I, huh. I think I, I I love I love what it does. Uh, mm. I, I might one day move up. That might be the only change. I may one day move up to Dynavac uh -huh. line. But right now, I'm, I'm content. And did you say what what kind of DAC you have? Oh uh, no, I just have a little uh, one of these little Bluetooth blinks from Adcom. Okay. So you can, you know, use your phone or okay. nothing fancy. I haven't really uh, gone down that route yet. Oh, okay. I, I have to get over that hurdle of taking that area seriously. Mm, I'll get there. No I'll rush. get there. Anyway, thanks so much, Jeff. No anyway, problem. So do you want to see that melt? You're good? Um, <laughs> I think the, uh, that preamp has been a star. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> right. well, that's another, but that's a recent addition. That's a recent addition, mm -hmm. so. That was, a, that was right. a finishing touch. Anyway, my name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. 